Happy shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God. This is opposite of what many people are teaching us today. You know, um, he says in verse 25, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Can a camel go through the eye of a sewing needle? That's not what it's talking about. That's what I used to think. Uh, a needle is, there's a small hole, a hole in the wall of Jerusalem or, or around any city, and the camel has humps, one or two humps, and they don't want to open the gate. Maybe it's late at night, an enemy might come in. So they got these small holes that they can uh, open up, and the camel's got to get on his knees and crawl through, and it's hard for him to get through there because he might be scraping his hump on, on, as he gets in through that little hole. So it's difficult for him. So Jesus is saying it's not impossible for a rich man to get to heaven. He's just saying that you got to put me, you got to put the Lord before my riches. Amen? So he couldn't do it. He couldn't take up the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ and follow him. And then look at Mark 13.42. Mark 13.42. Let's see. This is about, whoop, there is no 1342. I have written it down wrong. This is about the widow. Let's see where it is. Okay. The widow. Take heed and may not deceive you. For many shall come. Okay, but you shall know. Help me out, church, if you see a widow in here someplace. Well, I'll tell you the story anyway. Um, there's a widow, and she's uh, very poor, and here people are coming to put money in, in for the temple, to, to the uh, treasury, like to pay their tithes, all right? And what happens here is this, um, all, all the, all the uh, people that got money, rich people, they're putting in, they're putting um, maybe a lot of money in there, okay? Someone puts in $100, someone puts in $500. But Jesus says, he shows, he shows a real life example to his disciples. Look, these people are putting money in out of their abundance. In other words, they're rich. It's easy for them to give $100, $500. But look at this widow. No husband to take care of her. There was no jobs for women like there is today at that time. All right? And... Um, so this woman is poor. She's got two mites, let's say two pennies, and that's all she got. And she throws it all, all two pennies, inside the, uh, the offering there for the temple. And Jesus says, you see that? She gave everything she has. The others gave out of their abundance. What is he teaching? Real sacrifice. Amen? It's no big deal, man, if you got... You know, if you got a hundred thousand dollars, five hundred, a million dollars, and you put in five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars in the offering plate, okay? But take and put in everything. This woman trusted the Lord one hundred percent. She knew in her heart. She didn't. She didn't believe the seed faith stuff. You know, the Pharisees believed that because they were Jewish, and because they were uh, leaders of uh, of Moses's law and all this, they believed that riches were part, part of it all, that they supposed to be rich. Did you know that? The Sadducees, that's another sect of these religious leaders, they were very rich, very rich. So this was common thought in the, um, in the Old Testament and at the time of Christ. Okay, we're, we're leaders, you know, Jesus says uh, you uh, you make broad uh, the, your, your garments, the sh shoulders on your garments, salactories, you make them big and all this. And they're showing off to the people how righteous they are, how good they are. And Jesus said, you look good on the outside, but inside you're white, whitewashed sepulchers. In other words, there's bones of the graves from the graves inside. You're, you're inside your heart, it's like a graveyard full of dead bones. It stinks inside. You look good on the outside. But uh, it stinks inside. And, and so this widow trusted the Lord. Trusted the Lord. 
you know, I, there's been so many times in my life that um, I just had to trust the Lord where my next job is coming from. Trust the Lord to give me money to put food on the table that day. Amen? And I'll tell you something. It's good to have faith and to trust the Lord. As you can see, we're, we're still alive. And we're, pre we're preaching the gospel. The gospel of the grace of God. Amen? But these people who think that all these riches and stuff, they would look down on this poor widow woman. They would look down. Oh, something must be wrong here. God isn't blessing her, man. She must be in some kind of sin or something. Like they would look down on the woman washing Jesus' feet. If he knew what kind of woman this was, if he was a prophet, he wouldn't let this woman touch him. They just thought they were so good. So they were so self-righteous. The parable Jesus gives of the uh, the two in the uh, temple. The uh, Pharisee looked, you know, he's looking up to heaven and thank you, Lord, for making me rich. Thank you, Lord, for giving me, making me righteous and all this and a good man. And not like this guy here. And here, here's this poor guy, this uh, publican there. Uh, not a public man, but some, some guy there in the temple couldn't even look up, just smote his breast, and he said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus said, that guy was justified. He was right with God. He was, he was righteous. Not this one that thinks he's righteous. And that's what, and that's what this prosperity, this luxury, first-class style, a cursed thing in the camp gospel is, people. This is exactly what it is. And so we, we cannot have the victory against our, our enemies. Listen, those that refuse, I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, ignorance is one thing. There are people who preach the prosperity gospel. Their, their motive is totally covetous. They're not saved. They don't know the Lord. But then there are people that should know better. And they think they're saved. They think they have the Holy Spirit. Okay? But what's going on is, They've been deceived because there's a false gospel in them. Another Jesus has come in. Another, uh, another Holy Ghost has come in, Holy Spirit. An, uh, another um, gospel has come in their life. That's in Galatians chapter 1. Paul says if we or any other uh, person or angel preach any other gospel, then that which we have delivered unto you, let him be accursed, anathema. And he says it again, you know, and to receive another, there's, there's another Jesus. There's another Jesus. You know, he, he, he's rich, he's decked out, man, he goes first class and he wants to make you rich. It's another Jesus. We need to be rich in good works, amen? We need to be rich in sacrificing ourselves. We need to be rich in denying ourselves and helping others. We need to be rich in uh, not perverting God's word. Amen? Huh? Praise the Lord. So is, this, is, this is serious, man. Very serious. Let's look at Philippians chapter 3, verse 17. Philippians 3, 17. Okay, we got the right scripture here. Philippians 3, 17. Are we there? Okay, Paul says, Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them, mark them, put a mark on them, which walk so as you have us for an example. For many, verse 18, for many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who mind earthly things. Amen? They mind earthly things, carnal minded. This prosperity gospel, this luxury gospel, is a carnal minded gospel, it's a worldly gospel. It's not from God. It's going to damn your soul. It's going to damn them that are preaching it, who refuse to preach the truth because they'd rather make money. God help us, man. He says in verse 20, For our conversation is, is in heaven. 
from whence this word conversation is our lifestyle is in heaven, from whence or where also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is even, even able to subdue all things unto himself. So Paul, he, he's weeping for these people. What happened? They're, they're going after money. They went, they went the way of uh, Balaam, who tried to curse the children of Israel three times, but God wouldn't let them. Mad, mad for profit, mad for money. God help us. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 2. We, we should know this scripture here. It's quoted a lot, but I wonder if people know what it means. 2 Peter 2, verse 1. But there should be false prophets among the people, even as there should be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies. He calls this gospel a damnable heresy. Even denying the Lord that bought them, look out, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. Their lascivious ways, their way, their ways of covetousness, by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be spoken evil. You know how many unbelievers, how many people who who use this? What are you talking about? What's this about Jesus? He's gonna save your soul. They're after money, they're after money, they're after money. That's all they preach is money. You so stupid you're sending them their money? And you, and you believe this Jesus stuff, this salvation stuff? Of whom the way shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness shall they with feigned pretend words, not genuine words, make merchandise of you. You know what merchandise is? You go to the store and you buy something. That's merchandise. Okay? They got dollar signs on you when they look at you. How much money you are. They go into poor widows' house. They go into widows' houses. They got any money saved up? You know? That's, that's what they do. They got the scope on you, trying to cite you out. W what kind of money you got? Are you, are, you giving, are you giving enough? You're supposed to give more, you're supposed to give more. And they give you prophecies and they, and, they, and they pervert the Bible and make you believe that if you give, you're supposed to be, you're going to get rich. They're making you twice the child of hell that they are themselves. They make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time linger it not and their damnation slumber it not. You see in verse 1, damnable heresies, denying the Lord that bought them. Oh my God, there's an accursed thing in the camp. You preachers that have made, made your church, your treasure chest here on earth, it's a damnable heresy. And swift destruction is going to come upon you. You're denying the Lord that bought you. God have mercy upon you. God have mercy upon you. What does he say in, in 1 Timothy chapter 6? 1 Timothy chapter 6. He says in verse 5, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain, gain is godliness, from such withdraw yourself, get away from them. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, clothing, let us there would be content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, a trap, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money, this covetous love of money above the souls of men, this love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after have erred, erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. Run like the devil from them. Flee these things. Follow after 
Here's your treasures in heaven, righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Look at verse 17. Paul's not against rich people. God's not got nothing against rich people. Some people are born rich. They can't help it. <laughs> Some people worked hard and started a business and got rich. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, thinking they're better, nor trust in uncertain riches, their money and, and their riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Amen? That's a good word, isn't it? And then finally, we'll just close with this in Matthew chapter 6, one of my favorite scriptures. Matthew chapter 6. And starting in verse... Let's go to verse 25. Let's start, I'm sorry, let's start in verse um, 24. No man can serve two masters. This is uh, Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters. How come? For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon, God and money, God and luxury. You can't serve it. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on, is not life, is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, they are not planting no crops or nothing, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment, for clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not like one of these. Therefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow for, tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So what are we to do? We're to seek God's kingdom first. We're to look to him for everything. And he says he's going to provide. We have to, of course, do things. If you're not working, you need to look for work. Amen? You, know, you, don't, you don't sit at home watching TV and get evicted and say, God, why didn't you provide for me? you got to do things. God, God will help you. God will direct you. God will find work for you. God, God will do uh, good for you. He will feed you. He will clothe you. But we need to be busy about the Lord. And I just, I just want to pray now for um, any of you that might be caught up in this gospel. Don't you sense something is wrong when you read the Bible? Because this is a big, big dispart, uh, departure, falling away from the faith. This is, this is part of this apostasy that the church goes into that ushers in the Antichrist. This is the Babylonian whore church, this kind of stuff. She's decked out with precious stones. She's got that gospel. And she's rich in everything. But what has she got in her hand? A cup full of the blood of the martyrs, the blood of the saints she drinks. Okay, don't let them don't let them bleed you dry, saints. Don't let them bleed you dry. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord. Lord, anybody caught up in this? Anybody um, believing that they're supposed to be rich because they're giving money to the church? 
Lord, help them. Help them to understand we're to give because it's the right thing to do. It's a faithful thing to do. Uh, it's, our, it's our reasonable service to do and not to expect nothing back. And if you should give us something back, Lord, whether it be in this world or the world to come, that's because of your grace and your mercy upon us, Lord. We, we, don't, we, we deserve nothing. Everything you've given us is according to your grace, being justified by his grace. Praise your name. So, Father, I just pray right now that if anybody's caught up in this, that they would renounce it. Renounce it out loud. Just, just tell the devil, listen, I'm not listening to that gospel no more. I'm not going to believe that stuff no more, this luxury gospel. I ask you to forgive me, Lord, that I've, um, that I've gone after this, that I've been duped and tricked into this thing, Lord, about I'm supposed to be rich and, and uh, telling other people they're supposed to be rich and preaching this gospel of prosperity and looking real good on the outside and being filled, filled with, with damnable heresies on the inside making merchandise out of people. Father, I pray right now that if, that if you would convict uh, pastors, evangelists, people in the churches of this sin, this accursed thing in the camp, and you would start setting the body of Christ free. Start setting these people free, Lord. Because I know, Father, that if they confess their sin and they turn from their wicked ways and they pray to you, you will forgive their sin and you're going to start healing this land, Lord. Father, we pray for the nation and the things that are about to happen and, and for the church to wake up and understand that we're about to be um, put in the vice. We're about to be persecuted severely and we're not going no place. The rapture and the second coming is the same event. And so, Father, wake up your people. Let them stop playing games. We need to be a living sacrifice and we need to be martyrs witnesses for you if it comes down to it, Lord. Help the pastors to stand for truth as the immorality gets uh, stronger and stronger because it's increasing, not here just in the United States, but around the world. As these things come and press in on us, Lord, and God's going to separate the wheat and the tares. Father, help us to be of the wheat, the good wheat, not the counterfeit tares. Help your people, Lord. Help your church. Help the Help the body of Christ, the saints, my God. Prepare us, Lord. Prepare us, Lord, because a bloodbath is coming. A bloodbath is coming. And precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And they overcame him. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. So I just pray a blessing upon everybody and just... Help those to repent now. Grant them repentance, them that are caught in this, caught up in these things, Father. And we ask you this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, saints. We'll see you next time.